Okay, video three. Um, so the interpretation of uh, that 95% confidence interval. So it was 2.1 to 35.1. And how do we interpret it? Well, it's gonna sound very similar, very similar to proportions. Uh, I am 95% confident that the mean generic battery life is between 2.1 and 35.1 minutes longer than the mean brand name battery life. Um, so really similar to proportions when we were comparing proportions, but now we're comparing means. A um, couple of things I wanna make sure you, you do uh, have in there. One, context, you gotta have context, so you gotta put minutes, okay? And then I put longer, sometimes you might put greater, sometimes you might put more than or, or less than or something like that, um, but just think of the context of the situation, okay? Um, and actually, now that I think about it, um, you actually shouldn't need to put less than. Uh, you should either put greater than or, uh, or more than or something like that because uh, we always put which mean first? We put the larger mean first, okay? Always put the larger mean first. Now, of course, if, if a negative number was in there, then negative would stand for uh, uh, shorter in this situation, okay? Uh, which brings me to coming uh, to a, a two sample T test for means. Uh, in this particular situation, uh, our null hypothesis uh, would say that mu sub b is equal to mu sub g, and I'm not going to write down the whole definition of the variables, uh, but we would assume that the means are equal to each other. And I want you to notice I put brand name first, which, wait a minute, that's actually wrong. I should have put generic first, so let me change that real quick. Okay, uh, generic needs to go first because generic has the larger of the means, right? The larger of the sample means. So that needs to be generic and that needs to be brand name. Okay, there we go. Just uh, changing things as we need to here. Um, so I assume that they're equal to each other. Um, however, in this situation, I'm pretty confident that the generic, uh, the mean life of generic batteries is greater than the mean life of brand name batteries. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to use this confidence interval to prove uh, uh, this test here. Okay, do I have sufficient evidence to show that this alternate is true? Well, I do. I do have sufficient evidence. Okay, um, so what I would write here, and, and, and keep in mind, I still got to define my variables. I still got to uh, name my test. This is the, uh, the two sample T interval for means. Um, I'm not going to use an alpha on this one. Okay, I'll, I will show you that, but we're gonna use the interval on this one. Um, I still gotta do my conditions, which we've already gone over, so don't forget about all that stuff, right? You still have to do that when you perform a test. Um, but here, my conclusion is going to be this. Since zero is not in my interval, I will what? I'm gonna let you think about that. Since zero is not in the interval, I will what? I will reject the null. Zero would mean that these two means are the same, or that they could be the same. Okay, that's what zero means. A difference of zero would mean that the two uh, means could be the same. And since zero is not in there, in fact, zero is not even close to being in there, okay? Since zero is not in there, um, I, I cannot stick with the mean. I'm going to, uh, or excuse me, I'm not going to stick with the null. I'm going to reject the null, okay? Um, so I'll reject the null. So since zero, I didn't put an E in my sense. There we go. Since zero is not in the interval, I will reject the null, which means there is sufficient evidence to show that the, purport, uh, the mean battery life of generic batteries is greater than the mean battery life of brand name. So in my next video, I'm going to show you how we would perform uh, the hypothesis test. Uh, and I am going to uh, make sure you know that uh, uh, when we have a 95% one-sided, hi Landon, uh, one-sided test, that uh, what that corresponds with. In fact, let's go ahead and talk about that real quick. So it's a 95% test. So if I were uh, to do the middle 95, uh, what's left on one side, 2.5 is left on one side, right? 
Um, so the corresponding test, wow, you want to show everybody what you just did? Well, that's amazing. Yes. Can I flip it? These are the things that keep us busy in quarantine. Okay, thank you. Okay, leave now. Um, so uh, my alpha, my corresponding alpha is going to be two and a half percent. So when I perform, uh, Landon, please don't do that. Thank you. When I perform a, uh, when I perform a hypothesis test, um, I know that my p value is going to be less than two and a half percent because I rejected at 95%, I rejected the null, which means I'm also gonna reject the null when I perform a hypothesis test using p-values. Um, and since the corresponding alpha is 2.5%, I know that my p-value is gonna be under 2.5%. Uh, and it's not even gonna be close, because zero is not even close, which means my p-value isn't even gonna be close to 2.5%. It's gonna be uh, sufficiently under 2.5%. And we'll see you in the next video.